Hello guys, I think I'm Hercules here. Welcome to the channel. Four to six weeks later. Alright man, enough jokes, let's get right into it. Uh, I know a lot of you guys was waiting on this video for about a month. Uh, I'm really just still trying to build up the channel and, and get certain uh, playlists into rotation. Like I want to do versus battles and a multitude of other things. So consider this like just the update on what I'm really trying to do. I would never leave something undone. If it's a part one and there's supposed to be a part two, a part two will come. And it will be in a respective amount of time. I think I released Bioshock, I've served for Defying the Generation Part 1, like 28 days ago. And this is the first day of recording, I think it's only going to take me two days, so it'll be literally within a month. I released them both, both of them are high information, uh, and they have a very loyal fan base to where I gotta actually show respect to it. And I'm part of that fan base, so I must also, in my own self-reflection, must show respect to it, so... Videos like that take a little longer to make, but I actually enjoy them a lot, and it actually gives me a new perspective on the game. So, with no band further, let's get into. Before we go, I actually want to talk about what we. I re summarize of what happened in uh, the series with the Final Generation Episode 1, which means we'll be going over Bioshock Infinite and Bioshock Barrier C Part 1. This is going to be in two minutes or less. I highly recommend you just go and watch Part 1 and then come here. And for anyone that doesn't know, this is not a, a summary of Bioshock Infinite 1 and 2. This is an explanation of how they connect and just how just how genius, in my opinion, that it was just to connect Bioshock Infinite to Barrier C, Barrier C. The, the transitions were some of the smoothest I've ever seen in games. We start off with a man named Booker DeWitt who sold his daughter across several dimensions to himself and another dimension as an alternate identification on his Comstock. Elizabeth finds this out and kills Booker DeWitt at the point in which he took on the baptism which turned him into Comstock, which kills all the Booker DeWitts and Comstocks. In Burial C, we see we have one more Comstock who escaped to Rapture because he actually killed an Elizabeth. He has, talk, uh, he has taken on, you guessed it, a Booker DeWitt. <laughs> uh, Elizabeth then golfed in rage, kills the final Comstock, but without a major expense. Let's just say the apple didn't fall too far from the tree. So, that's where we're at right now, guys. In Bioshock Infinite, you have Booker DeWitt, who is selling his daughter. He keeps trying to repress the memory. We fast forward in time. Now we have the last Booker DeWitt. Actually, it's killed in Burial Seat Episode 1. And now we're introducing Burial Seat Episode 2. But like I said, remember, we got the girl Elizabeth. Or not Elizabeth, we have Sally, who was still in the vents, which was Booker DeWitt's adopted daughter at the time. So, that was the most important factor. And remember, guys, I'm not really summarizing the plot of each individual game. I'm, as the first video, giving you guys all the dots as to how Bioshock 1 and Barrier C are connected. We start off seeing Elizabeth living her dream in Paris before it's interrupted where she sees what, be what she believes to be Sally. It turns out Elizabeth was actually dreaming and is laying on the floor next to the last dead Comstock. And who do we see? Atlas. Elizabeth then sees a Booker DeWitt giving her instructions on how to stay alive. He tells Elizabeth that she can get the Atlas to Rapture, uh, that she can get Atlas to Rapture via Dr. Shuchong. I can get you back to Rapture. Put the gun down. Now, what was that you said about Rapture? I can get you back to Rapture. And how you plan on doing that, sister? You some kind of magician? Suchong. What? Tell him Suchong. Su Chong. And how do you know that slant-eyed wonder? You're his lab assistant. I'm his lab assistant. Elizabeth then stumbles across her own dead body as she has a nosebleed. Take notice. She starts to realize she can't see into the future or open tears anymore. It is then she has a flashback. I've come round to your way of thinking. Have you? Yes. I do believe one can change things. But after all the bother, one often wishes that one had not. You're a fatalist. A physicist. A fatalist. So was Newton. Especially when it came to apples falling from trees. They always contrived to land with a splat. She left the child to rot. Are you implying she's the apple? I'm implying that she did not fall far from the tree. And now she wants to go back. I need to go back. To fix what I broke. Back to where she has no right to be. Back to where she doesn't belong. Doesn't belong? Wait, what do you mean? Do you want to tell her brother, or shall I? Because I died. There are rules. Even for one such as you. 
She'll forget. All the doors. And what's behind all the doors. All close to her now. She'll be just like the rest of us. Forgetting the past. The present. The future. I'd wager she won't even remember this conversation. We've arrived. You're trading omniscience and croissants for death and mildew. I left Sally to rot. For what? So I could punish Comstock? He was trying to help her, to save her, and I... If I don't make that right... We all have our crosses to bear. But there is a thin line between a martyr and a fool. Elizabeth has broken the one rule she can't, and that's go back to a realm in which she has already died. The Ludus twins are already wandered, she disregarded it, so she you can't see the future anymore, you can't go to different dimensions, you can't go to Paris. So, now that she understands all these things, she then finds, quote-unquote, a way to lift, uh, lift the, where her and Fontaine is up to the rest of the city. So, eventually, after she finds her way up to the city, Atlas isn't done yet. Um, when we said in the beginning of the game that we work for Dr. Su Chong. Su Chong. What? Tell him Su Chong. Su Chong. And how do you know that slantoid wonder? You're his lab assistant. I'm his lab assistant. He was his assistant. It made Atlas believe that we know where his ace in the hole is. Now, darling, being that you were Su Chong's lab assistant and all, why not tell me where me ace in the hole went? <laughs> You'll remember the ace in the hole if you guys seen episode one. If you have not, I don't know why you guys are watching this now. You should be watching episode one so you can remember all the things. Because a lot of things I'm talking about now came from episode one. Elizabeth then promises to find the ace in the hole in exchange for Sally. So, even though she was supposed to ra raise Rapture, uh, raise where... It's a part of Rapture. Even though she was said to raise a part of Rapture in exchange for Sally, Atlas went back on his word. And now he's saying, you know what? I'll really give you Sally if you can find me, me ace in the hole. Where me ace in the hole went. It is then that we meet Andrew Ryan, and he knows so much information on this. It's almost kind of scary. He's he even base he's basically says, I can't tell you guys just yet. I gotta wait to the end of the video where we'll be summarizing. He basically says what's going to happen. He says it before, so it makes it very curious as to what how much Andrew Ryan knew about what was going on in the city. We find encrypted messages all around Rapture re referencing the ace in the hole. So after we find all these decoded messages. We give the ace in the hole to Atlas, and surprise, surprise, he kills us, as we always known he would. It was been symbolized by the nosebleed. We knew someone was going to kill us. Andrew Ryan said it was going to be Atlas. Com's, uh, not, well, Comstock slash Book of the Witch said it was going to be Atlas, so we pretty much knew. Before we succumb to Eternal Abyss, Atlas says the ace in the hole is just a bunch of gibberish. Elizabeth tells him, it says, would you kindly? Now, guys, at this point, I really want to see. It's a lot of things that I want to say, important facts around that that I want to explain. But I can't say them now. So once we finish talking about Bioshock 1, which is coming up right now, we're going to summarize it all together so as though it can be no confusion, guys. But right now, I give you the summary at the end. And right now, I'm explaining to how we got to this point and as quickly and as detailed as I can. Bioshock 1 begins with our character known as Jack crashing in the middle of the ocean. Jack is greeted by no other than Atlas who says, would you kindly pick up the ham radio? And shortly after, would you pick up a crowbar or something? Which we both do. Atlas tells Jack that Andrew Ryan has him separated from his family. He wants Jack to retrieve them and bring them to him. When all in reality, Atlas never had a family. He just wanted Jack to kill Andrew Ryan. At the meet with Andrew Ryan, he says, now that he knows who we are, he cannot strike us. And it is then we get our Would You Kindly reveal. Stop. Would you kindly? Would you kindly? Powerful phrase. Familiar phrase. Would you kindly? Would you kindly get this? Would you kindly find that? Would you kindly find that? Would you kindly find Would you kindly get this? Would you kindly head to Ryan's office and kill the son of a bitch? Sit. Would you kindly? Stand! Would you kindly? Run! Stop! Turn. Jack kills Andrew and has figured out Atlas is Frank Fontaine. 
which was mentioned, you know, Frank Fontaine was a correct to mention in episode one. And after having us kill Andrew, sets a heart poison on us, or like some type of virus on us, which we have to find an antidote for, we kill Atlas and save all the little sisters of Rapture. Here we go to the best part, guys. This is where I, I basically, all the questions you're asking will more than likely, almost for certainly be answered here, and it'll also give you context to help you understand how did we get to this point and how did all these things happen. Elizabeth, who we now know has the ability to open tears, she felt she was different than Comstock until she killed a little girl, just as Comstock. So she feels she is indebted to Sally and would do anything to save her. She knows going back to the reality in which she died will kill her. So she looks through all of the doors until, like, she looks so far into the future until she sees our main character from Bioshock 1 saving all the little sisters. Now that she knows about that future, she does now go through all the acts even if it causes her to lose her quantum superposition and dying for good. To do so because just as her dad, she has to settle with death. Everything we do in Bioshock Burry C Part 2, we were always going to do because we had already done. Because Elizabeth had saw us doing that. Bioshock 1 Jack was always going to save the little sisters because Elizabeth had foreseen it and put all the steps in place. She even went as far as to make a ghost memory of Booker DeWitt saying things to her like Dr. Suchon and she knew how to make the city float. Like that's how she knew how to make the city float because she went into a future in which she already done it and then just remembered it. Like just forced herself to remember it so when she lost her memories she would have just little fragments of how to do it and she just need to be rekindled. And that is also the reason why she just gives the ace in the hole to Atlas. I know you guys are wondering, like, why would she just give that to Atlas knowing that she's going to die? She has to get, she has to give that ace in the hole to Atlas in order for her to die, in order for Atlas to bring Jack in, in order, and all those things have to be, it's a sequence of events and it's like a butterfly effect. And she couldn't get rid of any of those factors. It had to go exactly how it went. And I want to provide a bonus because I've seen a lot of people that don't know this. In Bioshock 1, our main character is the son of Andrew Ryan. That's why we can go through all the bad despair. The game is so genius, it gives us hints all throughout. Like, here's an example. We're putting all the bathospheres in lockdown until further notice. Ryan had us install some kind of genetic device into the thing, so only Ryan and his inner circle will be able to use them without dispensation. <laughs> but the boys tell me the keys are pretty unreliable. Sisters, cousins, anybody in the ballpark genetically will be able to come and go as they see fit. Jack is only about two years old. Atlas and Su Chong had pumped him with so much genetic mutations that he aged like 18 years in the span of like however long it was from when he sent the guy sent away until when he returned back to Rapture. That's why Atlas calls him a genetic freak at the end of Burial at Sea. We've got the activation phrase. Now all we've got to do is get that genetic freak of nature on an airplane and Rapture's ours. He hijacks the planes because he reads a letter at the beginning of the game saying, would you kindly? Well, you know, every, basically all the things, even like, it's just so genius, guys. I hope I cleared up at least one thing for you. I helped you understand a bit. It is one of the most complex game stories ever written, so I'm pretty sure I'm not correct on everything. And I'm pretty sure you guys will fix me up in the comments. Just don't rage out on me because I just have a deep passion for the game. That's why I made this video. I love this game just like how you guys love this game. So just let's help get to the bottom, whatever plot holes, whatever's going on in the story moving forward. Um, we're going to keep things rolling. we up to 500 views, guys. We're actually going to do a milestone coming up once we get to 100 subs. So help me, guys, get to 100 subs, and we're going to be doing a giveaway. I don't know where we're going to go yet. We're going to depend on the time frame. It's more likely to be a PS4, Steam, or Xbox One game of your choice. Make sure you guys like, subscribe, share, give it to your friends, share it to your friends' friends. I think I'm Hercules. Out! <laughs> I will mess with time! Do it! I'm glad you were here today. Talk out my fear to my nato a rackness. Bounce like shit. I'm strapped with plasmids. Mega bust up when I'm snapping like a spasm square. What happened? I'm on a tear when I spit. I be everywhere like I'm book of the whip.